three crab legs, a lobster tail, popcorn tail, potatoes, and regular shrimp. Wow. Ooh. Happy lobster fest. So, no church today. At least not at the normal starting time. They probably put out a notice or something, and we all know how good I pay attention to that. Felt kind of bad for Patty though, because she spent like an hour getting ready this morning, and we pull up and we're the only ones there. Uh, uh, but anyway, it's Donnie's big day, his interview at In N Out Burger. It's brisk. Uh, we did some rehearsing trying to brace himself for an interview even though this is his um will be his third job if he gets this job i feel like this is his first real interview and he really likes yes or no questions and i warned him that they're going to try to op or ask open-ended questions and get him talking so all we can do as parents kind of get them ready for the real world and uh, wish him luck but he's out there he's doing it on his own free will and you know, he's got his hat in his ring, in the ring, so I'm proud of him. See how it goes for him. Dump in the snow. It's kind of starting to get me into a little bit of a panic mode, I'm trying to prepare for the blackouts and things like that, so see how it goes for him. Tuesday morning, and it is freezing. thought this was worth documenting. Oh, I missed it. These two were snuggling in bed together. Darn it. But it is freezing outside. Ain't that right, Mama? Yes. Good morning, Don. How's your English muffin? Mm -hmm. It is so cold outside that uh, I thought this would be worth rolling the camera for. No, <laughs> never. Uh, let's take a look at the weather station because we are in the single digit of one degree. And um, I believe we hit record temperatures yesterday, maybe. I thought I heard uh, all time low of three degrees. Just how chilly. This winter has been uh, the truck is starting to freeze. Taylor's wearing a Chris's parka in the studio. Things are getting weird with these chilly temperatures. Let's give you a live look outside, folks. Temperatures. Uh, we'll give you a live look outside in just a moment. For now, we'll start with Aaron out in Carson City. Negative one degrees in Carson City. Becoming a bit paranoid. Um, just worried about disasters. I've since uh, built an emergency power inlet for a generator let's go take a look at that so I can have a generator sit below that power goes out plug into that it is beautiful out but yeah just paranoid about power going out um, we haven't had an issue like that before but I just don't like depending on uh, anybody so we're set up for that you'd think hiring electrician would you know take the uh, pain and suffering out of it and you just sit back and have it done right but let me tell you no so let's take a look at what I found that the electrician did when he was here so I'm gonna put this in simple, well, the simplest terms I can. So when you open the panel, the instructions, the diagrams are up on top, which you don't really notice because when you open it, you're trying to get this from, you know, not falling on your head and you're looking at the breakers. But real quick, this is a square D panel all in one. Okay, there's the serial number of it. It looks uh, pretty terrible because it's aged. There's a diagram of the breakers. So I have an actual copy of this uh, that I pulled from their um, product page on their website and I can overlay that. All the locations except the home line 
breakers. Now they'll designate a T on some of their breakers, the ones where there's basically two poles, two switches, okay? It'll say H-O-M-T. That is a tannin breaker. And what a tannin breaker is, is basically also known as a cheater breaker. It is when somebody is trying to put two circuits on one breaker. Why? Well, who knows, for whatever reason. In this case, the um, panel only has so many spots for circuit breakers. It is a smaller panel. So that may be why he used a tandem breaker because there's just not enough locations for circuit breakers per circuit, which Square D allows, okay? But to an extent, they don't allow it on every location because then somebody could double up circuits on each location and overload the panel and that could be a safety issue. So long story short, they allow it on the top of the panel above the service disconnect. You can use these home line T, you know, which is a tandem breaker up on the top. Okay. Um, in fact, down on the bottom, the terminals where you snap in your circuit breaker have a feature that rejects a tandem breaker. Okay, it, it, it makes it so you can't even install the circuit breaker. Now that doesn't stop people and it didn't stop him. He, um, he forced the circuit breaker on the terminal, um, which hopefully, I don't think he did, but you could damage the actual terminals on the panel and have to replace the, the entire um, bus bar on the panel, which would suck ass. Um, and it definitely damaged the circuit breaker. You have to like damage it to get it to fit in. So uh, that's where I'm at now. I'm going to have to go replace two of these uh, tandem breakers with new ones and move them up to the top location where they should be. Um, and I noticed this because when I moved the tandem breaker from where I needed to install the circuit breaker for the generator, there was a, a tandem breaker down here where it's not supposed to be. I just moved it all the way to the bottom, again, where it's not supposed to be, but I didn't know. I noticed I had to put a shitload of force to snap that in there, and it is in there, and there's two of them. Um, but that is not proper. And the circuit is working, but if you force that breaker onto the terminal and it's not making the best connection, if if it's loose at all, it can cause heat between the breaker and the terminal and that could um, be a fire risk. So I consider that, you know, a safety issue. So that needs to be fixed before I continue working on this uh, generator. Um, I can overlay the diagram um, from Square D and you can see um, basically on the top there um, figure for a circuit breaker you'll see two lines that's resembling two of these single poles like light switches and it even says in the description um, next to that that two single pole one plug on space type HOMT um, can be used and on the bottom it shows one switch and it doesn't say that HOMTs are allowed on there does allow a two pole HOM may plug onto two adjacent spaces. That's what I did. Okay. This is a 30 amp HOM, just a regular home line, and it's a double pole, meaning you pull them both at the same time and they're on two separate adjacent spaces, uh, which is going to allow 120 volts to one side of the bus and 120 to the other side of the bus. That is fine. The only issue, the only reason why I can think that he did that, either he didn't know, which he's an electrician, he should know, or again, this was an old panel. He removed the entire panel, put in a new one. Maybe those wires coming out were too short to reach up to the top of the panel and he um, needed to get out of here and did what he had to do and forced it down the bottom since the wires weren't long enough. So I'm hoping that's not the case because when I go in here and try to move one breaker two breakers up to the top I have to take two of those single poles that are allowed on the bottom and hopefully all the wires reach so that's what I get to look forward to we're going to kill the power
And real quick, just to test this, this should be able to slide up and new breaker for the generator can turn on, preventing the city power from being able to be turned on. So that's pretty cool. All right, power is off. It's gonna go. My bend was pretty perfect. It rubs a little bit here. Let's thread this guy on there. So these are four circuits that are moving up here. And the question is, are they long enough to reach all the way up there? And go one at a time here. That's why you put it on the bottom panel because it doesn't reach the top. What a pain. So I'm going to install this in here again for the time being so it's secure. We're going to try the next guy here. Same. You can see it coming out of the hole from the house. It would never reach up to the top. So I could extend this with a wire nut, <clears throat> which I don't like to have a splice in the middle of the main electrical panel, but to meet code, it may need that, but what I'm determining for now, for today, is I'm not messing with this. But at least I'm gathering the information I need to plan this out properly for another day. Look at that. Just don't stop. Go on, go potty. Hopefully I can just sweep this off. Oh yeah. That's the snow I like. Leah likes to play. Leah likes to play. You don't know what to think of that. All right, just got finished shoveling. City law that you shovel your sidewalks. So I'm a little guilty of not always following that law. Got the cars ready to roll in case there's an emergency. I think I'm gonna roll the MKS out today. It actually handles amazing in the snow. It's got brand new tires, all wheel drive. Aviator has brand new tires as well. That was an expensive month, tires for both. 
Um, but it really hasn't been handling well. I don't know if something's going on with the all-wheel drive, but it gets super shifty. So another important thing, besides uh, getting all the weight off the <clears throat> jacuzzi, is to shovel out the fences. If the breaker did trip, or if I do have to use the generator, you can't open the fence because of the snow. Well, that's a problem. Wouldn't want to be jumping the fence. As you can see, I was just out here yesterday and finishing up that conduit, how much we've accumulated. I'm going to be so frustrated if we get an outage before I finish preparing for the generator. Beautiful though. I've since added another long piece of conduit and the pipe goes in right into this indent here. So we're going to measure off of that. So yeah, just continue this on. There's just barely enough clearance where this second conduit comes out of the sub panel. I think it's going to work out just right. Go on, honey, go. All right, forgot my six inch rule. That's pretty close to what I'm trying to do. And then I'll cut. So, when this is mounted against the wall, this conduit is already bumped out 3 8 This trim piece is already bumping this conduit out, so I think that's going to work perfect. Leah. Okay, just can't have anything sharp in here. Just been overthinking everything lately. A few years ago, the neighbor's house caught on fire and that was because of their dryer. So uh, I just got in uh, dryer mode the other day and Donnie and I, um, went to town on cleaning out the dryer vent. I mean, we took the whole dryer and ventilation apart and cleaned it out thoroughly. I think Patty gave us a nine out of 10 job done. You know, she's hard to please. There's already something in here. Huh. Huh, my old ID. Your old ID in our dryer vent. Finding goodies already. Here, uh, why don't you turn this off to the side so I can see what comes out of it. Good showmanship. Oh my. Okay, hold it. Oh yeah. Not bad. Look at all that. Look at 
Look at all that. Oh, that was good. Mom will be happy. And bonus, we got your ID bag. Well, I don't need that one. Got any goodies? Ooh. That's not too bad. Ooh. Outside of that, I've uh, been teaching Donnie how to drive, and um, you know, he's got to see firsthand how terrible people drive. Uh, for example, I think our dash cam caught um, some crazy driver just blow through a red light and in the middle of a, a snow filled intersection. I mean, the light turned green, and we were at a red light, and it was green. And it was green and it was green and then sure enough this vehicle just comes cruising on through the intersection right through a red light and uh, pulled up next to him later on his nice California plates he's sitting there not even paying attention looking down on his phone really irritated me and then uh, yesterday um, going on the frozen streets the day after the snowstorm everything was iced over uh, we came up to a red light and I looked in my rear view mirror and this truck came hauling ass behind me and I knew that there was no way he was going to be able to stop and sure enough he starts sliding he's sideways and he's coming right up on our bumper and I pulled forward into the intersection from my red light just so he wouldn't hit me so it's scary out there and uh, that's why I want to leave early today if you can hurry up and finish that and get your backpack. Drivers don't know what they're doing. All right. But yeah, one degree. Dogs are. Man, I, I really missed it. They were just snuggling up. I was really trying to capture that. Nico uh, feeling a little under the weather, so he gets to stay home today. Um. That's about it. I made uh, a whole vlog that consists about 40 videos and uh, somehow I just decided to delete it entirely. So I was a little frustrated about that, but all we can do is move on. But it was just, uh, for the most part, family time, snow, playing with the dogs, more snow, things like that. So pretty upset the amount of time I put into it but we got some uh, some new footage and we're gonna post that and uh, just moving forward what you got going on there Nick? so you gotta take some flour some pizza mm -hmm. 
You want to take some flour and rub it on the rolling pin so that the dough doesn't stick to the rolling pin, okay? Okay. My own pizza. Yeah, what'd you put on there? Did you get some ingredients? Yeah, I put on mushrooms, bacon, and on all these. Cucumbers? Yeah, and cheese. Nice, dude. You don't want some olives on it? I'm going to. I'm just put it on these. It's fine. Don't you pass me the artisanal, Patty. It's artisanal. It's fine. Yeah. I don't put this in sticks in this. No, it should be fine. Yeah. Don't. You can get started on a piece of that. It'd be very unique. Yes. No, no, no. We're going to put the, pull the stones we'll out. Put some and olives on, dude? The on the Spread them out a little bit. Yeah. And then make it. Well, it looks good, Nick. Is this the last pizza going in? No, we have one more after this. Mm, nice. Hi. That one got a yeah. little. Some mushrooms, some pepperoni, and def olives. Definitely a little cooked on that other one. Yeah, it's artisanal, it's fine. It's <laughs> Nico. Having a little Sunday family dinner. We had some uh, options of doing. Um, Build your own nachos or build your own pizzas. And we went with pizzas. Because Holly certainly has the oven space. Yeah. That was a good idea. Yeah. Gotta get some reason to get together. We can do that next time, but me and you just had fajitas. Is this one you built? Mm -hmm. What you got going on there? Put, it's nice and thick. I put pepperoni, bacon, green onions, olive. I put a little bit of garlic. Uh, oh, and I put mushrooms. That sounds pretty good. What's Uncle Marcus got? I don't know. We got the Holly Special. Holly Special. And the Dawn Special here. It's a pizza party. It's official. We're celebrating. It's. The last days of mom being a grandma. You know, you're going to be a great grandma. <laughs> yep. We're just. I'm going to be a great aunt. Waiting for a baby a to come. Aunt, but, you know, <laughs> no, I'll be literally a, a really great good great aunt. aunt. <laughs> be a yeah. great, great uncle. <laughs> you know. There's You'll more pizza, mom. A hunkle. Yeah, That's a right. Remember, not just an ordinary uncle. This was a good idea. Build your own pizzas. Yeah. Nico, uh, Nico's pizza turned out pretty good. I think it's really good. This was zucchini and bacon. And olives. Mm -hmm. Frank the Tank is uh, <coughs> healing up quite well, getting his bow flex on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's spoiled. <laughs>